Hello and welcome to the Churros Etacticus Podcast. It is Monday, March 18th. We're almost in springtime. And springtime is the most important time of year, not only because it's a time of renewal, rejuvenation, but it's also the time where everyone needs to go into clutch mode. All the big teams in the Champions League need to get their shit together. They need to peak at the right time. They're playing their biggest games of the season. And here is where it gets really good, guys. From here on in, this is where people make their money. This is where people come alive. This is where we separate the good from the great. Very excited for this time of year. Diego Lorin is here, fresh off waxing Atletico at the Metropolitano. Very, very difficult, challenging job. Congratulations on that trophy, Diego. Meanwhile, Real Madrid continue to maintain the gap between them and Barca and Girona with a big win over Osasuna at El Sadar, one of the most toughest places play, to play in Spain. And we are here. Diego is here. I'm here. It's Churros Day. What's up, guys? What's up, Diego? How you doing? What's up, Churros fam? Good to see you. Happy Monday. Hope you guys are all having a good start to your week. I know I am. Massive win yesterday in the Wanda. Uh, made sure that today, the start of the week, on Monday is just a little easier. Um, and I know you... Uh, predicted that this was going to be in your eyes i guess a cakewalk far from it mind you if you actually <laughs> watch the game far from it yeah far from it, far from uh, it yeah. unlike what took place in el sadar um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh let's get into it my friend um barca we're second now managed to leapfrog girona finally back in that second spot uh, not just that, but securing, I mean, uh, mathematically, but definitely taking a definitive step forward to securing Champions League football next season, um, beating a direct rival, doing so at a place where they've only picked up Ws. You talk about Il Sadar being a tough place to win. The one that's an absolute fortress. The only team that has managed to not just take away points, but three points is Barca. The last time that a team managed to do so was Barca last season. The only team. Not Real Madrid, no. not Girona, not Real Sociedad, Atleti Club, nobody. Barca did it. And I'm very happy about it. I think we're peaking now at the right moment. Um, this team's coming together. I think this Paron, this international break, slash Copa del Rey final break. We're going to get into that. It's coming at the most inopportune moment. Um, it's crazy. Like, Kian, I was looking. April basically has one match <laughs> in the domestic league, at least. Uh, I would love to kind of get your thoughts as well as to what you think that the whole league should stop for the Copa del Rey final. Anyways, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Xavi's team hitting their stride at the right moment, my friend. And I'm very, very happy. This was a tough test. And we passed it with flying colors. So, salute to the Chavineta and the whole entire squad. I love that you just proved my point with the, the your statistic about Atletico having a fortress at home. And the only other team to have beaten them here was Barca. Last year, you, I didn't have to. There was no rebuttal needed from me. You did the rebuttal. You proved my point. This is um, this is the team you guys love to play. This is Atletico. Atletico loves to play you guys because they get their fix. They get to uh, frustrate Maridisas by giving Barca a win. They have no shame. They have no shame. So, so we, we okay. Let's get into that, right? Um, I saw your tweet. It got thousands of likes. <laughs> your your presence online, my friend, is is quite something. It it is impressive. Your influence. You talk about PR. Your your influence. Very nice. That was a nice exchange between Coke and the greatest midfielder of all time. Um, last year, indeed, we picked out three points, and no team managed to do so since then. Take a look at the statistic. 
or at the result rather the year prior a 2 0 win for Atletico. Take a look at the year prior to that, a 1 0 win for Atletico. Uh, if you look at the grand scheme, the it overall it picture, stops there. <laughs> Not it doesn't stop. <laughs> it, w- take Look, a look at it, bro. D- no, just tell, just tell me Simeone's record for Bar- versus Barca. Barca. That's all you need to do. Since he's been oh. an Atletico manager, what's his record against Barca? Five defeats, baby. Go over how many times has he beaten Barca? Say the number. Never. I just did. Okay. Chavi, okay. greater than Cholo. Okay. I mean, that's that, 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 yeah. You know, that, you're, it is yeah, what it is. Be, no, that's what it is. Yeah. Also, mind you, you said always. You're 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 talking in always. You're talking in extremes. Mm-mm. It's called hyperbole. You don't need to take Mm-mm. everything so literal. Yes, mm. it's not no. always, but we know what the general consensus is, right? It's it's incorrect. You're putting something out there that's it's just not. not accurate. It's it is accurate. It absolutely is accurate. You can go over the numbers. They, when it comes to Barca versus Real Madrid, they show up against one team and they don't show up against the other. I knew, I knew the script was written. That's why I told you before the podcast. It's so like I'm not. I, I just just want to make it clear. I, you're not. You're taking this as like some kind of. You're, like, you're taking away credit. You're taking away the merit. But that, that, that I want to make that clear. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not doing that. I think Barca played really well yesterday. I want to say that. Uh, and I've never been shy about saying that. Um, you know, when we talked about Napoli, I think that was only for patrons on Friday. I spoke about how Napoli sucked, but I also spoke about how impressive Kubarsi was, how impressive Yamal was, how impressive um, Fermin was. Lewandowski's been on fire. Yeah, they all they played well. I'm not taking that. I want to make it clear that that's not the part I'm saying. I'm saying okay. that. On the opposite end of the spectrum, whatever it is, Atletico, the way they play versus you guys, it's I have zero trust. No one has trust. We all going into that game. We know exactly what Atletico are going to do, how they're going to show up against Barca. And we know how they're going to show up against Real Madrid. And you guys collectively are like this too. The way you show up against us, the way uh, they show up against us, we know. You guys, you guys, and then after the game, it's just... All the Atletico yeah, but, fans and all the Atletico fans and the Barca fans they give each other a hug and look at this oh it's so cute for those on YouTube they can see this Xavi and Coke embracing each other player coach Xavi is Coke's coach Coke is real Xavi's recognizing real real it's greatness just, recognizing I, greatness it's just really wholesome I love it I love that you guys are friends it's beautiful it's great I'm happy for you guys to have an ally like that in the league it's great. You you guys you you miss Espanol too much. I I, I see what's going I, on. I here. absolutely miss Espanol. You got but, that right. But uh, but again, long, I mean, long live Raúl Tamudo. If if you if you if you want to <laughs> cherry pick or limit this narrative of yours since Xavi took over, then yes, obviously the numbers favor. No, since what Simeone, you're what, I mean, what Simeone, you're what you're putting out there, it's but the whole Simeone era. It's not. It's not true. I just told you the two nil, in in the the what is that? The tenth of February, two nil, twenty twenty one. Okay, so you got went back three years to find one. What else did you find? Then there's then there's no. Then there's a nil nil. There what? the year nil, nil. the year, oh, the year, go, the the year before that. Do a nil, the year nil before that. Well, you're, 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 you're making it seem go. like. The nil nil. Can I finish? Can the I nil nil trophy? I don't. Can I finish? The nil nil trophy. The two nil win for Atletico. Nil nil the year before that. One nil the year before that. Two two the year before that. Then now we're in 2019. Barca win one nil. Then the year prior to that, a one all. Then the year prior to that, okay, one nil for for Barca. One one. Uh, a two one. A one all. A two one. I mean, it's like. It, it it just doesn't hold weight, man. If you look at the numbers limited to Xavi, then yes, it's five and zero. Oh. But you know, I mean, it it wasn't long ago before uh, when the statistic, when the stats, Carlo against Xavi were also massively lopsided in favor towards Xavi. And I didn't hear you talking much smack then either. 
And then obviously now in these recent well, classes. Well, now games, Carlo, Carlo has more ch- classical wins than Xavi now when they faced each other. I, I, I don't know if I don't think it's more. Yeah, it, it he surpassed he has surpassed Xavi in the in the classical duels. That's that there was a time where that was true in a limited sample size, which included a game that was dusted when the league was over. And and, and I know you shamelessly love to count the friendlies too in Las Vegas, but but I don't. But to summarize it. In uh, 21 games, Atletico have won two times, three times actually. 21 games, last 21 games. Mm. So we can just summarize it that way. It's okay. Like I, I'm not like this is not a criticism of anyone apart from Atletico. It's not a criticism to Barca. You guys did your job. You guys do what is in front of you. I'm just saying that my point is. I'm not even claiming conspiracy, although that there might be some people doing that, and maybe there's something there because certainly the way Atletico reacted to that loss is that they won that game. All I'm saying is that I have zero trust. You're crazy. No, dude. Stop, no you're hold crazy. On. Let's bring this up. You're you're, you're, so you're right, spewing. I forgot about this. I gotta just friendly. copy and paste this graphic for the whole podcast. My absolute point is, Diego. Nonsense. All I'm saying is that I have zero trust in Atletico doing anything against you guys. That's all I'm saying. So okay. you can well, tell I me. Well, I mean, you, you, you you're, you're suffering from short-term different. memory then. I guess, I mean, I don't know. What can I say? You're suffering from short-term memory loss. I remember, I know Atletico as a team that always gives it their all, is always historically, traditionally, and has <clears> always <throat> been a tough side to beat. I'm I have memories era, from them, in this era, I'm them not eliminating talking, us, not, yeah, not once, but twice from the Champions League. I'm not looking forward to them if uh, by a miracle we managed to beat PSG in the quarterfinals, move to the semis and face them again in the semifinals. I'm not going to be feeling comfortable at all whatsoever. Okay, that's fine. So you feel that way. I feel this way. There's, we can end it there. You are scared of Atletico or you, you think that it's going to be uncomfortable for you guys. I'm saying that I personally, and you can, you can't tell me how to feel. I have zero confidence in Atletico doing anything against you guys. If you guys get past... It's not listen, an insult, mate. I'm not. I'm not con- listen, criticizing. I'm not insulted. It's just ridiculous what you're saying. You're actually going out on a it's limb. It's ridiculous that I feel saying, this way. Saying you listen to yourself, Kenya. You just said that Atletico were celebrating this loss. Look at that smile on Poke's face, hugging Xavi after the game. I don't know what you're trying to prove with that. I'm telling you how I feel. You can tell me not to feel this way if you want. I'm sure if you did a poll of every Maridista, as far as polls go, nothing is ever 100%. But this is about as close as it would get to 100%. If you polled every Maridista and said, do you think Atletico have a chance against Barca? I'm pretty sure that poll will be almost 100%. No, they're going to roll over. It's not even the results. Forget about the numbers we put up, the th- the the three wins in the last twenty one matches between Simeone and Barca. It's also that the eye tests—they're just terrible. They don't everything they do in other games. Like you remember the one the game at the Manju earlier this season. <clears throat> I can't believe we're spending so much time arguing. This is so silly to me, but I'm. I guess it's ridiculous. I'll just make this point anyway. That game against in the Manju it. They were actually in good form heading into that game. Everything they did up until that game just went out the window at the Montjuic. They couldn't make a pass. They couldn't defend. They couldn't put a single transition attack together. Okay. Um, and it's even worse away from home. I'm just, it's it's good news for you, bro. If you guys get PSG, if you guys get past PSG, you're in the final. That's amazing considering all the all the concerns you've had about the season it's great why are you why are you so against this idea because it's just silly dude you're okay. you're talking nonsense i agree it's it's, the debate is silly for sure i agree with that <clears throat> to 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 say that it's a guaranteed win and it's a given it, it's silly but you know that but anyway you're catering towards your minions and they have an ball no minions, right now bro bro there's no look if, of course if if, it, if, if 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 no one was hearing me say this ever and me and you were just in a dark room and if, no one else would hear what somebody. I was about to say I would I would sincerely feel I would say Diego I have zero confidence in Atletico doing anything against you guys 
and I don't have I don't have to cater to anyone. I'm not, I'm not like throwing a party with all the maridistas. Like I'm not. We're, this is not a point of celebration for us. I'm just telling you how I feel. Yeah, I'm telling I'm telling you it's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, okay, okay. Right. So be, before the podcast, when I mentioned this, you said we'll see, and we saw we saw. Atletico just played dead. Played absolutely dead. not. So the first hour, if you actually watched that game uh, with any uh, critical eye, you would have noticed that in that first half, the first half hour. Uh, Barca were put under a lot of pressure. It was a very uncomfortable game for us. We were unable to find each other, string passes together. Um, and Simeone's press was very, very effective, I felt. They had the better chances. Uh, Morata had a chance on, on a half volley, although he certainly didn't have his best game. Uh, he had a chance to score a goal. There were several goal-scoring opportunities for Atletico in that first in those first 30 minutes um, that he goes chances right here these little dots not a single clear-cut chance again you, you didn't watch the game you're looking at I the dots absolutely did. i watched the well, whole then game. you would know kian then you wouldn't don't say like don't dismiss uh say what they did last night and what i saw with my own eyes or what everybody saw that watched the game intentively attentively with any kind of seriousness to it uh, instead of pointing at dots and say these were not good chances, they had chances. Uh, they four saves from Ter Stegen, double saves for that matter. Uh, there Ter Stegen was one double save which absolute, was good when it was two no mind. down after they brought Griezmann on. And and Morata on a volley grazed the crossbar. I think it was um, who was it that I think it was Lino that had a chance that went uh, grazed the post as well in the first half in the first half hour. Uh, there were chances there. There were chances for Atletico to go up 1-0. Uh, it was an uncomfortable half hour to watch. I thought it was going to be like that for the entirety of the game, uh, to be quite frank. My bet before the game was that we were going to walk away with another 1-0 victory. Uh, and that is despite the fact that even before the game, we got the news that first Cancelo was unable to travel with the team um due to personal problems uh at home we we have no more information than that for the moment uh but uh the team and Chavi dedicated this win to him he's he's going through some personal things uh and during the if that wasn't already bad during the warm up Andreas Christensen injures himself and also has to come off so we have Hector Ford as a uh, a very good uh, left back, mind you, um, but in an in, experienced somewhat playing a Spanish top flight, playing with the first team. He had made uh, made his break already, but uh, I mean, it doesn't you know take away from the fact that he is a, a, a rookie, so to speak. And Fermin Lopez slotting into the midfield, not you know. Um, the obvious decision, obviously, given the fact that Andreas Kisesen had to go out. So you had to shift uh, Sergi Roberto more in a defensive, uh, in, in that holding midfield position, Gundogan alongside of Fermin Lopez. Um, the point being, I mean, Xavi had to improvise and put a complete uh, different lineup out, uh, out there than that he had practiced uh, throughout the week for and that he had planned on. And... Um, you know, it worked out obviously really, really well. Uh, but it wasn't until that Joao Felix goal that originated from the boots of um, uh, of Gundogan making a beautiful run, dagger pass, beautiful pass, cutting between the midfield lines over to uh, Robert Lewandowski, who turns from his defender unselfishly, sees... Uh, Rafinha or is it Rafinha? Joao Felix in in a, a shooting position, the pass, the one touch shot, and into the back of the net it goes. He, it had to be him, of course. It had to be Joao Felix to not just score in the first leg at the uh, Luis Compañ Stadium, but over in the Wanda Metropolitano as well. To what are his ex fans or the team that still at least owns him on paper? Um, that really kicked off. A beautiful night, an absolutely beautiful night. Uh, th this was nearing the end of the first half. It wasn't, you know, very at the end of the first half, but uh, I guess 
deep in the first half enough for them to kind of receive a psychological blow and back that up yeah. with the 2-0 coming out of the gates, coming out of the dressing room uh, in the beginning of the second half that, yeah, really definitively kind of put the the dagger into the hearts of uh, the Colchoneros that, that packed the Wanda last night. And Barca were in, in full control mode after that. Uh, you know, there, there's absolutely no doubt about it that we played them off the park um, beautifully. I mean, I, I think it was one of the best games of the season. Um, just, you know, from... from uh, Robert Lewandowski playing his mind out since February. He was um, player of the month in La Liga in the month of February and is continuing that this month. It's very good to see, of course, um, Big Bobby coming into his form at this time of the season, scoring goals, two assists as well. I thought that Rafinha played excellent. He continues to be an, an, an underrated player. His defensive sacrifice as well. You see him tracking back, uh, cutting, making good runs, uh, assisting his players. I thought he was phenomenal. Gundogan was great. Fermin Lopez, of course, the other goal scorer on the night. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, this and, and, and big ups as well to the Hector Ford, Pau Cubarsi, who had another stellar, stellar game. Uh, Hector Ford shows that he is un digno reemplazo, like a, a, a certified replacement for that left flank. I thought that he had a great game, uh, especially given the conditions. Uh, Ter Stegen looked phenomenal. The double save he didn't have uh, too many direct save to to make on the day, but when he did, he was there. Um, and all in all, man, just just. Yeah, a great game. I would like to see more of uh, Victor Roque, to be quite honest with you. He is also somebody that continues to show that with the few minutes that he gets, he does so much. I mean, he really wreaks havoc up there, up front with, with the runs that he makes. He's he's just omnipresent, um, shows so much heart, so much, so much ambition, so much skill and, and football IQ as well. Uh, seems to be always at the right spot to receive the ball. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see a lot more of him. I, I feel like, you know, he's getting mm, too few minutes right now. But who am I to disagree with with Xavi Hernandez, who I think is doing a good job of, of kind of easing him in to the first team. He is just a teenager still, uh, just 18 years of age, but uh, showing a lot of promise and, and a lot of Hopefully, for for many good many more good things to come, um, and you know, well deserved rest for Lamina Mal as well. I kind of called it against uh, Napoli that I wouldn't have mind him resting, and for this game, he got the rest that he needed. Uh, just 16 years of age, he cannot continue to play these kind of minutes. If we're gonna be, you know, bitching about. The Pedris and 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 the Gavis and the Ansu Fatis, the Baldes getting injured because of you know playing so many minutes and being forced to play with Barca and the Spanish national side. Let Lamin Yamal rest. I mean, he still is is forming his muscles and his bone structure into a mature man. He's just 16. He cannot keep up uh, this rhythm. And uh, so I was, I was happy to see him come off the bench. And be that, uh, yeah, be that player that 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 fresh set of legs in a place like the one that to continue to keep up the intensity that this game required in order to you know keep the one that quiet and and suffocate Atlético de Madrid in their own home ground and, and pick up these three points. I love it. <clears throat> I love it. I, no rebuttal needed. You proved everything that I I already said. Ter Stegen had little to do. Played them off the park. They were quiet. And uh, I think you you proved my point. On Yamal, on Yamal, Lamin Yamal, I think like for Barca, you just want him in the on the gala. Like in the must-win game, have him there probably. I would anyway if I was if I was Barca. Because he's just such a offensive engine on his own, even at his age, that you want him on the field when the chips are down. Mm. And then just rest him in between. I think we're at a stage now where your important games are all in the Champions League. What happens mm -hmm. in La Liga is just maintaining second place, really. Yeah. But um, 
PSG is the big one. Like I, I honestly can't see him on the bench against against PSG. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. But w- would you start him? I mean, would you start Rafinha on the left then? Or are you going with uh, Joao or yeah, yes. Ferran? Well, here's He's why. Injured. Because I think Joao Felix's performance against Atletico has to be with an asterisk. <laughs> you could argue his two best performances this season have both been against Atletico because he just absolutely hates them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's smart to have him on the field and anytime you play against Atletico. There's a, there's a bigger... <clears throat> discussion to be had about what the hell happens to him next next year the atletico yeah. bridge continues to be burned atletico also i don't i don't necessarily know like what they're going to ask for from barca do barca even as good of a player as he is is he someone you want to pay or do you want to just let him go and and give it to other players give that position to other players i don't know where barca stand on that necessarily but or another loan or another loan to buy your sub time. I think yeah. that might be the option. I think that might be what will happen in the end because there's no chance that Atletico will, you know, give him up cheaply after renewing his contract until 2082 or something. I mean, it's it's like I think it's 2028. 20, no, when did they renew his contract? Before the loan. But his. Oh right, so 2029, yeah, the 29, undoubtedly, yeah. yeah, long contract, um, yeah, and that was obviously a massive. I mean, I don't know. I suppose I was going to say mistake, but at least it gives you security, in the sense that if his value gets raised, which I think has been raised a little bit this year as opposed to last year, then you want to get something for him. Um, yeah. Yeah, then uh, it'd be an interesting one to see what Atletico do. Um, we're behind on super chats. We have to take. I just wanted to um, put a bow on it. Although I think our super chats may bring us back to it, but if you don't agree with my own personal feeling that Atletico are completely inadequate when it comes to facing Barcelona, just take this part. You guys match up well against them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys match up really well against them. Um, I think they just, for whatever reason, against Barca, they're is I mean, in in most games, but their passing in transition goes out the window. They rely a lot on Morata to drop deep and do a lot of link up play to help with the transition attacks. I think in that sense, actually, Memphis kind of matches up a little bit better. I'm surprised Memphis didn't start this game, especially with Griezmann on the bench, just to give them a little bit more power in transition, Yeah. Um, given the form he's in. Plus, you got to factor in the X-team thing, you know, Memphis. You know, yes, like, I was surprised too. But but I don't know. I just I think you guys match up really well against them. So if you get past PSG, I think you guys should feel good about your chances of getting to the final. <laughs> Look, I mean, the hope is there. Uh, obviously, this team is showing that they can compete um, at the highest stage w- with the the toughest teams. And I think right now they're peaking at, like I said, at the, the top of the broadcast at the right time. Um, all season we've had this doubt, you know, w- is this team ready? What is happening? Why does this team fall off? Why are these... Um, lapses of concentration. So many individual errors have continued to punish this team throughout the season uh, uncharacteristically. Even, you know, Marco Andre Stegen just yesterday uh, in that first ha- half hour gives a pass. And I, I, it wasn't Morata. And I, don't know, I don't know if it was Lino. I don't know if it was Llorente or Riquelme. But um, just gives the ball away to one of the Atletico forwards that... Thankfully, you know, didn't end up in the back of the net. But these kind of mistakes have punished Barca time and time again. How many times have I not come on this podcast talking about the early goals that we concede from the from the onset, right? From the, within the very first minutes of a game or coming out in the second half, Barca would concede a goal. That has kind of stopped. The defense in Barca's case has improved as well. Uh, Kubarsi, without a shadow of a doubt, has got something to do with that. Araujo is back into that form 
that we are used to from him. Kunde is playing really, really well, even though he's playing quote unquote out of position, or at least not his favorite position on the uh on the right uh as, as a right fullback. Um and you know, I mean Cancelo's defensive ability, I think Hector Four defensively is better, is is more solid, more reliable, but Cancelo gives you that offensive you know, threat, that offensive power. But all in all, Barca's defense has also improved a lot. And, of course, the return of Marco andre Ter Stegen, with all respects to Iñaki Peña, you know, he wasn't uh, a Marco andre Ter Stegen. So um, if we can minimize that, if we can continue to be solid in the back, uh, yeah, I think we have a chance, man. I, I, I do think we have to fancy our chances. This is Barca at the end of the day. And we're going to go into this quarterfinal with the second leg at home uh where even the Luis Compañes has has shown that it can be a pressure cooker on the given occasion when the night is right the magical mountain can turn into a, a beautiful place a home ground a home away from home if you will for Barca so you know with all the threats that PSG have and that we're very much aware of and and that continue to worry me heading into this quarterfinal. I do fancy our chances to compete and, you know, hopefully if God is on our, the footballing gods are on our side, we can, you know, overcome this, this very strong parasite coached by somebody who knows Barca inside out. Uh, they have a Dembele who also will probably want to, prove something even though he left you know on his own terms he's playing against his his, his old side and Mbappe who of course is I mean the last time we faced him completely demolished us with a hat trick and uh a 4-1 win in that first leg at the Camp Nou so you know the memories are still there they linger and uh are very vivid mm, it's not going to be easy but we have a chance and when we do then it's Atletico and Dortmund next and, um, you know, if we do pass PSG, if we beat PSG, then, of course, we got to fancy your chances to beat the the team that will face us in the semifinal. And then it's a final, hopefully. And, you know, what ha well, anything can happen over uh, one game. Let's see, man. Let's cross our fingers. Let me just make a few points on the things you said before we move to Super Chats. Um, the Ter Sagan point is interesting because you mentioned that his giveaway – nearly resulted in a goal for Atletico early on. And, and he's interesting because he also had some incredible passes that broke Atleti as well. He is both a genius um, breaker of a press with his ball distribution, but also can be a crutch because, and I'm kind of amazed that more people don't press Barca because we've seen Ter Sagan make so many mistakes on the ball in conjunction to also being really good. He can all, he is also prone to errors. And I, and I'd like to see more teams press. I Real Madrid, anytime they press Barca like that with a man-to-man -man high press and just have dared Ter Sagan to pass the ball, it's worked out well for them in terms of generating chances out of nothing. Um, I will say this about Atletico. I like their chances against Barca in a two-leg Champions League knockout more than I do in a one-off La Liga match. Cholo's ceiling in, in a two-leg Champions League knockout is obviously very high. There's a history behind that, that backs that up. There's also, um, you know, it should be noted that if it wasn't for Real Madrid, beating them A, in a with a last second Ramos header and B, in a penalty shootout, he could have had at least one, possibly two Champions League titles to his, to his name, which is crazy yeah. for Atletico de Madrid, right? Yeah. Um, if I'm for, if I'm a Barca fan, if I'm Barca, I need to I like I want to see what the team can do in a game against PSG and stop mm. measuring in games against Atletico and Real Madrid. Mm. I want to see what the team can do against the Eintracht Frankfurt's, the Romas, mm. the PSGs. Mm. Well, I think we showed we we beat the Italian champion in pretty convincing fashion with our ups and downs uh, i agree but there's a test that you passed yeah that, that, I, was, I, that was the first test um 
I like and just and don't take it the wrong way because I had the same criticism with Real Madrid, who are terrible against Leipzig. They need mm-hmm. to improve. But I think in, in possibly in both Real Madrid and Barca's case, we were lucky that the mm-hmm. opponent was Leipzig and Napoli, respectively, not to punish us more. Um, so I think both Real Madrid and Barca need to improve in, in that respect for the next tie. Yeah. But, no, I agree. Yeah. So that that's all. I mean, because like I saw, I've seen a lot of Barca fans after yesterday. Chavi should stay. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm, in favor. I'm not against yeah. that. I, 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 if I'm a Barca fan, I'm just saying that like the measuring stick should come maybe at the end of the, the season to see where the team is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I said that yesterday. By the way, I was uh, back on Barca live yesterday. It's yeah. quite funny. Made it full circle. The very first pilot episode that we ever did for Barca Live. What is it now? Like seven, seven years ago, something like that. Um, was a Barca, was an Atletico Barca. That one finished in a one old draw, mind you. And um, and now yesterday we kind of came full circle with another Atletico Barca. It was it was just a funny sort of personal anecdote that mm. uh, that was the first one to pick pick up uh, uh, the Barca lives, but. Um, Shit! Now I lost my train of thought. Why? Where, where was I going with this? Um, Measuring sick tests. Me, yeah, of course. I mean, look, there, there's no doubt about it. Un, un, until Barca make a, a seriously deep run into the Champions League, mm, you know, everything is just all, all that's taking place now is is our let's call them quizzes or tests let's call them tests that are being passed so far coming out of the group stage uh the the round of 16 the quarterfinals up next but also we have to say that performance wise this team is improving Do, i mean again i i'll say it for a third time i think we're peaking right now i think we're playing the best football that we have been so far this season i don't know if you agree or not but probably yeah that, that's what my uh, eyes tell me. Um, and up next is, is, you know, if not the toughest, one of the toughest tests that we've had so far this season with, with uh, you know, with Real Madrid, apart from Real Madrid and, and obviously <laughs> Napoli and the Champions League uh, uh, knockout phase, PSG in the quarterfinals is a massive test and we need to pass that. Is it a test that we can fail, that we can lose? Yes. Uh and also there, I would say it will depend on how we lose if we do, you know, for me to kind of hold my reserve, my judgment on on how well or bad Xavi has done with this team. I, I, you know, I think Xavi is also incredibly brave. Um, yesterday, I don't know if you noticed Kubarsi's game, but it was another stellar performance. I, I have his stats here. 77 passes, 95% pass accuracy, 7 out of 10 accurate long balls, uh, one key pass, uh, one chance created, um, two out of two aerial duels won, three out of four normal duels won, the six clearances. Anyway, for a 17-year-old that has just made his Champions League debut and, and, and his break with the first team, I think these are hugely encouraging numbers. And uh, everyone, this whole team seemed to be, you know, hitting their stride and at the right time. It's also a very likable team. I, I think with the suffering, you know, these victories come at a time where it helps them to uh, solidify, like bring some unity to, to this team. I got my hands up. Don't shoot. I'm no, just an innocent coulé. I was afraid. wondering how long it would take for you to notice that. Luca, <laughs> Luca's home from school today. Lucas. So, he was Uncle was, Diego over here. <laughs> he doesn't even know uh, that I think he can just smell the coulé from the screen. It's like, <laughs> Dad. No, he doesn't know. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, th- so like, you know, seeing this team like celebrate these wins and, and celebrate each other's successes the way they, uh, you know, were around Hector Fort yesterday, Kubarsi in the other game, it, it like that helps to, to build this team. It helps for team building and helps to uh, solidify the unity. And and that is important as well. And, and when, when the going gets tough in a game against PSG, this kind of unity um, and the getting together of the team is 
is important, you know, and 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 it it, it allows me to be cautiously optimistic as i often say on this podcast cautiously optimistic is a good place to be generally i like the mm. frame cautiously optimistic um all right we're behind on super chats bro let's get the super chats and let's see where that takes us so first up we got rishav singh just a new member welcome to the family rishav rishav i recognize that name from twitter i believe suva deep sinha says is it better play by Barca or just horrible from Atletico and to think they might face each other in the Champions League semifinals again just blows my mind C can I can I take this yeah of course Suva deep I don't know how long you've been watching football for my friend Google Champions League Barca Atletico de Madrid watch those four games and then come back and ask that question again. I think he knows. Then, then I don't understand this question. The question was, in that, <laughs> in the game that just happened, was it a matter of Barca being better or Atletico being horrible? But yeah, I get it's the second part of this question that, oh. that I have an issue with. Well, he's saying he's just pointing out the fact that you guys are playing against each other again. Well, we, first of all, that that remains to be seen. But in the case, in the hypothetical case that we do, the history shows that it will be an uphill task for Barca in the Champions League. Okay, but well, he's, we, we he's not saying otherwise. He's just saying, wow, they might face each other again. That's all he's saying. Right, but he's saying it. Suvadip, you know very well you just read what the you're question. saying. Don't, don't, don't yeah, but you're, 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 he's, he's saying, you're, you're, Suvadip, you're framing this question. You're saying it blows my mind, meaning, meaning it'll be a cakewalk for Barca. In the semifinal, and I'm telling you, he's not saying that. Look, shows... look, read it. He's saying, "quote And to think they might face each other in the Champions League semis again just blows my mind." That's all. He's just pointing it out. God. Okay, leave him alone. Fine. Thank you, Subadeep, for the thank you, uh, generous donation thank you, thank you. and the comment. And, and I, I will say, for me, it's better play by Barca. Okay, um, I will say, probably the greatest defensive performance I have ever seen in my life was Atletico's performance on defense against Barca in that Champions League semifinal. What year was it again? 2012, 13, 14 range, something like that? Yeah, something like that. It was like a defensive masterclass. Like the way they rotated, the way they plugged channels. And this was against, you know, a great Barca side, obviously. Um, if anyone wants to learn how to defend, that should just be studied by anyone who wants to appreciate the art of defense. It was so good that I even was like entertained by it. You know, like defensive football is not entertaining. The science with which they <laughs> manipulated Barca's space on defense was fascinating. So, uh, mind you, that Atletico team was way stronger than this current one. Johan Juarez says, any thoughts on Xavi repeatedly pointing out that the team has played better since he announced his retirement? The well, it's a fact. Retirement. It's, it's a fact. <laughs> yeah, give, <laughs> give him a little bit more time. No, he just got started. Um, it's a fact. It, it, this team has been undefeated in 10 games. Uh, I think it's eight wins and two draws since Xavi announced uh, his departure at the end of the season. So it's it's a fact. Do you think that's why he did it? The why is the big question, right? I mean, I don't know. Um, and he's also kind of dropped in press conferences of late that as of today, his decision is firm. And it's that as of today that has a lot of journalists speculating whether or not he might change his mind come the end of the season. Yeah. No. If it goes well, I don't see why he wouldn't stay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree. He's, he's for me. He's still the best person for the job. Um, you know, especially given the options. If you look at a, a Hansi Fleek or all the names that are being mentioned, even a Jurgen Klopp, with, with as much as as much respect as I have for the the Klopp's, especially, um, you know, we sometimes somewhat half jokingly dream or talk about an, an, uh, a Chabi Alonso. Uh, that's of course probably one of the most unrealistic unrealistic options. But uh, these had to be 
uh, a club flick, uh, a two hole, etc. There are no guarantees that they will do a better job than Xavi. They don't know sure. Barca the way that he does and the way that he knows. So uh, I think I think Nagelsmann would do better. Hmm. You don't think that there's a potential cultural bear um, uh, barrier there when it comes to language, when it comes to just being out of his element, really, touching down at, at Barcelona. I'm I'm a little bit ignorant on this. You would know way better. Are there examples in Barcelona's recent history? By recent, I mean like 30 years where an outside coach has come in like that? Well, yeah. I mean, we've had plenty of, of, of outside coaches. Not uh, outside coaches. Outside of Barca's like umbrella like kuman was not it's not an outside coach because he right guard right right card mm, okay. at tata martino mm. i mean both of those guys were were good it well, i mean end well but it was good for a period yeah i mean tata you know you could argue should have won the league had that the the legal goal stood and and not been disallowed but at the end he lost the league so he walked away with nothing uh, having won nothing uh so you know he he definitely wasn't as successful as let's say Rijkaard. Rijkaard was was at a successful stint and important period at this club that that ended on a, on a sour note um but coaches like very let's say randomly i i would probably say that tata because even reichard had the stamp of approval of a johan Cruyff, you know what i mean um and the dutch obviously the dutch uh, uh element the dutch factor tata i think was probably one of those that that was very much out of that realm kike setien let lucas play Play the harmonica, son. Oh, yeah, you we, you have a good ear for for music, and you knew that was a harmonica right away. Play. Can we get That's some? Really surprisingly uh, good. He's never even played harmonica before. <laughs> You're surprised. <laughs> My son is a genius. He's just born with all this innate talent and uh, musical ability. <laughs> um, Suva Deep Sinha, new YouTube member. Welcome, buddy. Welcome to the family. Second City Saint says, will Carlo get sacked if we get destroyed by Manchester City again? I don't think so. I think he's he's got one more year at least regardless of what happens this season. Prexina says, I take offense to being called a minion. Yeah, no, that's offensive, man. Oh, stop. That's offensive. Minions are like... The who doesn't I love a minion? For calling them minions. <laughs> Cancel. <laughs> minions are the cutest thing. Who doesn't love the minions? You got it's minions it's a cute. it's a compliment. Min By the way, just real quick, it was yeah. the 2013-14 quarterfinals and 2015-16 quarterfinals where Atletico beat oh, on both quarters. occasions. Okay. Barça, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um McDaddy Zard says, Keon, we all know Atletico are going to spread cheeks in the Champions League semis. <laughs> I hope you're right. Listen, I, I'll take it. I, like, I, I, I want to, you know, I want to sign on to this theory. I just, history tells me otherwise. But uh, if, if you're right, my friend, then God bless. I, I would like to be proven wrong. Suvadeep uh, says, I saw an interesting post from a Barca page. Oh, here we go. Thank you guys for, for all these, these donations, by the yeah, way. You guys, you guys are very awesome. generous. All right, thank you. I saw an interesting post from a Barca page that Fermin Lopez is their response to Bellingham. Interested to hear both of your thoughts on this. Well, that's, that's silly. What? My well, I mean, first of all, all respects to Fermin Lopez. Um, this teenager has done a fantastic job and deserves to be getting all the praise that he's getting 
uh, at the moment. And it's an absolute joy watching him play and seeing him continue to shine. He's got a, a knack for scoring goals. He's very offensively minded, got great vision, able to exploit spaces, running into them. But to you know put him up next to a Bellingham, it's just it's silly. It's an unnecessary comparison. Let the boy enjoy his breakout season with the first team and become form himself into a mature football player. But you know, I don't know what no serious Barca page or somebody covering Barca would ever draw a comparison like that. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I think it's probably everyone. Probably these pages are run by kids from their yeah. parents' basement and not by like serious people. <clears throat> Big L mixed with JID. <laughs> says months ago i came for gulair commentary and i stayed for awesome football content your channel is criminally underrated keep it up G. hey man i appreciate that thank you spread the good word my friend uh Big L, Goulair, rest in peace. didn't you send something uh gulair related to me on Twitter? yeah what was that about was that sarcasm was that what was that i don't remember what no. it was no, I thought you were making a reference to when I was doing a solo sesh and I talked about the Guler, the potential Guler drama that is boiling underneath the scenes uh, at the Bernabeu of him not him being disgruntled and feeling that he does he's not getting enough playing time and he's worried about the Euros and not being as important for the Turkish national side and what should be his breakout season, yada yada, and the arrival of Ben Bappe and Endrik will. It's just it's not looking good for him to get more minutes, is it? Yeah, I I don't know how it gets juggled. Mm. You saw his uh, his shot at the end of the assist in the game. Insane. Uh, I don't know, man. So he's competing with. Weirdly, I think he actually is kind of competing with Endrick the most, even though they don't play the same position. But no, the, the age wise, age age wise and uh, squad depth wise. Can I show that on 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 the screen? I'll do it. Okay, come. Luca Luca drew something for everyone. He wants to show it. You got to come quick though, because we're talking about Real Madrid. Beautiful, Luca. He says it's beautiful. Yeah, Luca just wanted to spread the good vibes for everybody. Love it. I um, need to smile. So more. I you know it's funny. I I I watched the Palmeiras game last night. And, oh yeah, uh, it's really interesting seeing Endrick, like what kind of player he is, because he's not a traditional nine. He's more in line with like some of the other strikers we have had in the past that are more mobile in their link up, like Benzema, Raúl, Butrogenio. They're not like traditional number nine strikers, like in the box, like you know, like Ruud van Nistelrooy or or Lewandowski or whoever. So he plays a lot on both wings. He puts crosses into the box. He's doing defensive work. He's doing a lot of passing work. Oh, really? Okay. And um, and so I think a lot of his minutes will be like, okay, let's say if you have in order of the depth chart, it's like Mbappe, Vinicius, Rodrigo, Brahim, Bellingham, that's five. I think after that, you have Guler and Endrick competing for minutes as a sixth guy for three positions. And if that's the case, you know, I think, you know, Endrick could sneak in there. It's not a foregone conclusion that Endrick would come in and, and play good right away. Um, and Endrick is at least ahead in, in seniority, even though he's still really young. So, I, yeah, it, but it's a legitimate concern. I'm not sure. It, you know, he has a lot of players to, to leap ahead of. So the thing that I pointed out on that that podcast was that, you know, it wasn't like a personal opinion. I was quoting uh, an article written in us where they made uh, where they had, you know, these these unconfirmed reports of, of his entourage, let's say, talking about his uh, discontent with the lack of minutes that he's getting. But it's also I mean, publicly, he's made it known. He's made it felt. And uh, Carlo Angelotti has addressed it in the press conference 
talking directly to Guler saying, look, if he has a problem with it, then too bad. Uh, because I will be in charge of who's going to play and how many minutes. And if he's not happy with it, then he didn't say that he could leave, but he said something along the lines of, well, that's, that's just too bad sort of thing. Um, I don't remember and we've seen his, like, what past, like, exactly he said to see how what, much you're exaggerating or not, but. No, well, I can, I can pull it up uh, yeah. in the meantime. But we, I'm curious we saw... to know what the actual quote was. But I, I'll, I'll I mean, I, I like look like he was just he had bad luck, man. Like when we signed Brahim and Guler, like we brought we brought Brahim back from Milan from loan. We signed Guler. I think if you we put ourselves in the time machine and and think about who we were really excited about more, it was definitely Guler. We saw the training clips. We saw the highlight reels with with Benerbache. And it was like, wow, this guy's really talented. He's kind of like an Ozil regin, but maybe yeah. faster, can play deep, vertical player, mazy dribbler, very elegant, great vision. <clears throat> we were just really excited. And we had seen Brahim at Milan for a couple of years. And we're like, yeah, this is a good player, but maybe underwhelming at times. But but I think Guler obviously just got had really bad luck. If he didn't get injured at the beginning of the season and he was playing from the beginning, his role in the depth shot would have been way different, if you ask me. Brahim, by contrast, was getting very limited playing time, but he kept impressing in his limited time and he worked his way into the rotation. Goulart never had that opportunity from the start. So when he came back, he was in a situation where there was just too many players who were already established ahead of him. And no matter how good he is, it's going to be hard to crack that. What I think you could argue that I, we would love to see more of is there's been games where Real Madrid have won the game with like 30 minutes left. But Goulart still doesn't come in until like there's five or three minutes left. Yeah, He's still yeah. good on him. He makes the impact. He scored last game. There was another game where he almost scored. And then last game, he almost scored from half. So in the three to five minutes he's getting, he's making an impact. So um, are... But, yeah, go mm. ahead. Are you referring? So what, what I'm referring to is the game against Sevilla, where um, it looked like basically oh, Goulet the is he warming was sent up. Back to the bench. He was sent back to the bench. Yeah. Made a public spat about it, or you know, showed his his frustration. Yeah. Uh, after Alvaro Rodriguez came on instead, and then in a press conference, mm -hmm. he was Carlo was asked about it, and he says the following. Yeah, he I said, remember now. Yeah. He said. Uh, uh, so I changed my mind after the goal. I yes. think he understands, but if he doesn't understand, it doesn't matter. I don't need to give him any explanations. Right. Well, yeah. And so my interpretation of that is like, look, this happens in football. It's normal. Sometimes you make a tactical decision. And then because the context of that was we scored. And so Modric had just scored the game winning goal off the bench in that game. And Ancelotti was like, okay, so I don't need Goulart anymore. I need a different approach. And now, like, I don't know what the – like, and Alvaro, by the way, actually made a good impact in that game. So – and his point was, like, look, sometimes you just have to make tactical switches and you change your mind, and that's normal, and he has to yeah. understand that, which is a reasonable take from Carlo. It is. Um, and I also so, think it's fair of, of, of Goulart to be frustrated in that situation. I would be, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm look, he's ambitious. barely been playing, yeah. and, you know, I'm about to come on, I'm excited, and then I just get sent back. I'd be, I'd be kicking a water bottle. So that's so, why I'm so, sympathetic of Goulet in that situation as well. So that article actually went a step further. And f the article finishes saying that Guler has no intention of staying with Real Madrid for another season. It's us. I, I don't like, who knows? Yeah. Well, you know, give it like, like make of it what you will. But that, that. Uh, I mean, given the scenario that you just outlined is, is, I think plausible for him to think like that. If he's like, look, if I'm going to spend another season on the bench playing one or two minutes uh, on the off occasion, what the hell am I doing here? I'm, I'm, I'm worth more than that. I'm, I'm more ambitious than that. So it's, it's something that I could see either become a problem or, or play out to the point where maybe he packs his bag this summer. Who knows? They're, they're not going to sell him this summer. Zero chance. What you, I think the, the closest thing you would get to that is maybe he goes on loan somewhere. To play regularly, yeah. like the yeah, Google yeah. Odegaard route, and then who knows? But I, I agree. I don't know. We'll see. Um, uh, McDaddy's art is back. He says, "You guys, what's your fab draws for the route to the final, Diego? What percentage would you give for City versus Madrid in the final? 
And how do you become a member on YouTube? I don't see that option in the app. So just to address that last point really quick, if you go on the YouTube channel, there should, like even on this video, there should be an option where a button that says join under the video. Uh, if you don't see that, see that on my um, memberships tab on my YouTube channel, there's a, there's a tab called memberships. Both of those options should work. Use, use promo code churros to get uh, half off. And sure. we know that you guys are subscribing to churros, not managing minions. <clears throat> I mean, uh, Madridistas. You also, so to get the bonus version of churros is you, you go to patreon.com slash churros y tacticas. That's where Diego and I will be recording later this week as well. So real quick. I think Atletico will go through. I think I think Arsenal will eliminate Bayern. I'm praying that City will eliminate Madrid. I don't think so. I think Madrid will go through. Sure. sure. And obviously I'm praying that Barca will beat PSG and I have my doubts about that. Those two are my biggest doubts whether Madrid will uh, eliminate City or not. And I think there I tip the scale slightly in favor for, for Madrid to do so. And with Barca, I, I right now, like I said, I'm cautiously optimistic, but there's definitely this uh, voice in the back of my head that is like, Mbappé, 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 Dembélé, Luis Enrique. That it worries me. It worries. By the way, how is the sound? I, I meant to ask you guys this at the top of the broadcast. I hope the sound is coming through loud and clear. Uh, if you guys could drop that in the chat. Okay. Yeah, it's good for me. Last last episode, for whatever reason, your volume was lower, but I think it's but, fine today. Did you notice it then as well? And no, not really. No, I, no. I noticed a little bit at the beginning, but I didn't think it was anything worth like, oh my god, we got to fix this. Okay. So I didn't realize until after we we finished recording. My prediction is. PSG beats Barca, Atletico beat Dortmund, Atletico, uh, PSG is going to be really tight, and I don't know who the who's going to win that one. Uh, Real Madrid will beat City, Arsenal will beat Bayern, Real Madrid will beat Arsenal, Real Madrid will get to the final and play either PSG or, or Atletico. So if you want to uh, timestamp what I just said, and love it, it look at that confidence only madridistas can talk like that i'll tell you boy i i i will always predict real madrid to win the champions league i do that in the me very too. beginning me yeah. too. me too no matter how bad we are how good we are oh yeah just sign us up like on the flip side no matter how good we are i never sign us up to win copa del rey hmm. um one last one from mr jumex he says Champions League final, penalty shootout. Last penalty to win it all for Barca or Real Madrid. Everyone, including the kit men, are injured. <laughs> Would you have the guts to step up and take it? Oh, I, I thought it was going somewhere else. So basically, the question is, if you and I were in charge of the destiny of Real Madrid and Barcelona, who would score? Wouldn't that be, a, wouldn't that be something? That would be a, a churros for the ages. <laughs> Man. That would truly, truly be special. We should reenact it. Next time we get together, let's actually have a penalty <coughs> shootout, me and you, and, and post it on YouTube. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Um, oh. Diego's choking up. Getting emotional. About the idea. I'm already choking. Uh, you can see where this is going. Barca Choke DNA. Job. <laughs> Bottle it, choke jobby. Look, man, if I I'll do anything. If if I have to do it for my squadra, for my team, I'll step up and do it and do the best possible job I can do. Mind you, I have a feeling like I would do a better job. This might sound crazy, but I think I have a better chance of making a penalty than Lewandowski does. <laughs> he scored three out of four penalties, but the way he scored that that his technique, man. You know, I prefer the Memphis style. Just fucking rocket that thing, top corner if you have that that ability. But that little hesitation, robotic, 
that shit just the little hop step is it's it's ugly first of all it, it doesn't ooze off any confidence and uh he's missed his uh fair share luckily he got to retake one as well but i don't know would you would you do it i've uh taken two penalty shootout um shots in my life the first one was in high school it was against the best team in our province and the winner won the championship it was the final and uh i had just watched zidane's penalty against portugal in euro 2000 euro 2000 you remember that one yeah and uh, i emulated it to perfection top corner and it was so you set it up as if you're shooting right and as you get to the ball you contort your body and go top left and i nailed it the second one i took was i was a little bit older and not in my peak and i missed it it was a terrible penalty i like my chances though i like my chances against the jumax <laughs> <laughs> but, I was gonna say against but, each other. Against <laughs> yes. Do you think if you if if Barca replaced Messi with you against no. Liverpool or Roma or mm. PSG, like do you think Barca would have advanced? If just like and Messi, by, Messi played Messi played great. Uh, like addition I don't, by subtraction, like you replace it, Messi it, like crying in a with corner, Jordi with Alba, just Diego maybe. at least working hard, like putting challenges in. Do you it, think it, Barca it put would me have in advanced? instead of? Put me in instead of Jordi Alba, and we're we're going through, man. I mean, I need Messi. Messi was great in that game. Uh, he, he had a bunch of scoring chances. He just didn't on the day. But you go back and watch those games. He played well. Jordi Alba, on the other hand, was crying at halftime. That was uh, what's up with that. That was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. I just I can't imagine if I'm just like I'm at Anfield, one of the craziest stadiums in Europe. Passionate fans. I'm down two nothing. There's like a comeback on the cards. Was it even? It wasn't even two. You're one, through. You're through to the next round at that point. And I look over in the corner and I see my teammate crying. <laughs> I'm like, well, fuck. Yeah. I don't know how to feel about this. Correct. Um, okay. Anything else before we wrap it up here? I don't actually. I gotta. I gotta run. I gotta pick up the ketos. Okay. Yeah. Um, Later on, I'm uh, for members, I'm going to be hopping on on Zoom. So if you're a member, uh, you get a, a link on Zoom. You can come in and chat to me directly. Uh, unmute your mic, turn on your camera. We can have conversations. Uh, also, as you can see there at the bottom, patreon.com slash churroski tacticas. That's where Diego, Diego and I are recording the bonus episode this week. And that one gets really raw and juicy. So just use your imagination, raw and juicy, right? I'll leave it up to you. Cameras on, microphones on. You know what I mean? Gets messy. Gets messy. All right. It's steamy. Uh, hot and steamy. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, this was great. This was fun. Diego, yeah, uh, enjoy international break. Ugh, Spain yeah. has some friendlies, which I don't care about. Um, mm. But, you know, enjoy it regardless. Take care, guys. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. You too. Peace out, yep. Diego. Peace out, listeners. Peace, Later. peace, peace.